The Creation of the World In the beginning, God lived in darkness. There was nothing else except for a vast ocean that rushed and raged over a mass of land that lay beneath. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was. God liked the brightness. He enjoyed it for a while and then called the darkness back for another turn. That was the very first day and night. When God lit up the second day, he began his next work. I want a roof to arch over everything way up high, he said, and all at once there was one. Then he parted the ocean, scooped up half of the water, and poured it onto the roof. The swirling patterns that formed above were beautiful. God gave the roof a special name, Sky. God looked down at the remaining water boiling and bubbling below. Move aside so the land can show through, he ordered, and it did. The land rose up and the water swirled around it. God was very pleased and decided to call them earth and sea. God made this world even more beautiful with grass and flowers and bushes and trees. Before the third day ended, they were growing all over the earth. On day number four, God decorated the sky. In it, he hung a blazing hot light called the sun, a pale cold light called the moon, and millions of burning, twinkling stars. Then he set them all moving around each other in a way that would mark out the passing of days, nights, seasons, and years. On day five, God looked over his creation and began to fill it with creatures to enjoy his world. He spent the fifth day imagining all sorts of creatures that floated, swam, and divided in the waters, and that sword hovered and buzzed in the air. And it was so. The sea was filled with fish and sea creatures, and the air was busy with birds and insects. On the sixth day, God imagined creatures that galloped, hopped, and slithered. Creatures with fur, scales, and shells, and with claws, hooves, and horns. Creatures that barked, hissed, howled, and grunted. All at once, the earth was alive with all kinds of animals. Last of all, last of all God took a handful of earth and modeled it into a figure that looked just like him. He bent down and breathed into the figure's nostrils. It shivered, blinked, and came alive and looked at him. It was the first man, Adam. God saw that the man would be lonely all on his own, so he sent him into a deep sleep while he made him a companion. God gently took out one of the man's ribs and healed up the wound. Then he shaped the rib into another, similar figure, the first woman, Eve. Finally, God brought Eve to life then woke up Adam and introduced them to each other. God watched the, his two humans with delight as they spoke and got to know each other. God was so thrilled with them that he put them in charge of all the other living things he had made. He even planted a beautiful garden especially for Adam and Eve to live in, in a place called Eden. At last, God sat back and looked at the world he had created. He had used every color, shape, and texture, and every size, sound, and scent that he could think of. God was very pleased with everything, and he spent the seventh day resting after all his creations. God blessed the seventh day as a special day of rest in memory of when he had completed his wonderful work. And that is how the world was made.